four down, two to go, and it is crunch time for the teams about to do battle tonight. A hiccup for the Jets at this very stadium a fortnight ago, but the team, like the loyal faithful, aren't ready for this journey in Asia to end just yet. A famous name and some very familiar faces here in Newcastle. These two brothers have both played some part in the fate of the Jets campaign so far. Only one will take part tonight. Hello, good evening, and welcome to Fox Sports' exclusive coverage of the Asian Champions League. It is match day five for Group E and we are here at Newcastle Stadium on a massive night for the Jets. They take on Beijing Guan of the Chinese Super League in their return leg. And joining me to preview this one, as always, former soccer guru Kim On Talidoris. Welcome, Kim On. Thank you. Kim On, an enormous night for the Jets, no doubt. We talked a fortnight ago about how impressive their campaign has been. They seem to have been lacking the killer blow so far, though. Mm -hmm. What's it going to take for them to take the three points tonight? Well, I think they've made steady improvements since their unfortunate loss in the opening round. I think they've found themselves quite comfortable in Asia now. I think Gary has demonstrated Gary Van Egmon has demonstrated that he has the coaching nous and the tactical awareness to be able to compete in this competition where they almost pulled it off last week against Nagoya. But I think tonight it's just more of the same patience and I believe the team will be superior um, in quality to, to, uh, to achieve a result tonight. Oh, come on. Let's hope so. All right. Well, there's been a lot of talk about the team news on both sides. For all of the team news, who's in, who's out and of course the all-important pitch report. Let's go down now to the sideline to talk to Simon Hill. Good evening, Simon. Good evening, Mel. Good evening, Kim. On loving the tie, by the way. Kim, on excellent. Uh, we'll come to the team news in a moment. Uh, I can tell you first of all, though, we could be in trouble, by the way, if these uh, balls hit the back of the net with uh, regularity over the next few minutes. Uh, I can tell you that Nagoya Grampus have uh, defeated Ulsan in the other Asian Champions League match in this section today, and that is actually great news for the Jets because it leaves second place in this group wide open. What it means basically is if the Jets can win tonight, and we know it's a big if, but if they can get the three points, then a draw would do in Korea on the 20th of May. So uh, some good news even before a ball has been kicked here at Newcastle Stadium tonight. Let's uh, move on to the team news then and look at the Jets lineup, which shows four changes tonight. Back into the team come Lubo Milicevic and Adam Deputo. They return after serving their suspensions. Joe Wheelhouse is back in as well. And Sasha Petrovsky will play alongside Donny de Groot in what we think will be a 4-4-2 shape. Out go Ange Costanzo, Ben Kantorovsky, who of course is suspended, Brody Moy and the injured Fabio Vignaroli. Now, so far as the opposition are concerned, of course, there's no Joel Griffiths tonight. He's out through suspension, but his brother Ryan, there he is. He will play, scored on match day one, of course, and uh, they've still got some quality in their team despite leaving seven players back in China, including the Cameroonian William Paul Modibo, as you uh, just saw going through on the uh, on the pictures there. Let's have a look at uh, their team lineup. As we say, uh, the likes of Xu Yun Long and Joel Griffiths, Darko Matic, they haven't made the trip. There is still some quality in that team. Notably, Gu Hui, who will uh, partner Ryan Griffiths, we think, up front. And in particular, Wang Chang Ching, who uh, caused a lot of damage down the right flank on match day one in Beijing. That match, of course, won by the Chinese outfit by two goals to nil. And Australian teams have only ever beaten CSL sides once in this competition. So that's uh, the size of the task facing the Jets tonight. Now, Andy Harper is going to be my uh, co commentator as usual. Good, Good to see you, Harps. Um, first of all, let's just chat a wee bit about this uh, surface because it's been in the news again as it was before the game against Nagoya. The Beijing coach Li Jiang Su has actually made an official complaint to the match commissioner about the quality of the surface. What's your take on it? Yeah, Is indeed, it that bad? Indeed, he wanted to get the, the match postponed and mm. I'm not quite sure if that's a preemptive strike to try and prepare the fans back home if things don't go well for Beijing tonight. Enormous pressure on this football club. It's not as bad as we were led to believe. A lot of rugby league played over the weekend and of course the electrical blackout here, which was an issue we were hoping not to have repeated here this evening. It's not in great condition the Energy Australia Stadium, the Newcastle Stadium as we call it in the Asian Champions League but it's very playable and as all the coaches say at this point it's the same for both teams we certainly hope whatever the circumstances it works in the favour of the Jets. We've seen this over the last uh, few months in the A-League season right around the country Hops issues with the playing surfaces yeah. with Australia bidding for a World Cup in 2018 and reports going back to the AFC about the quality of, uh, of the pitches is this something that could hamper the bid do you think? 
Well, you'd, you'd hope not. But I think you have to look at this in two categories. Firstly, on a logistical basis, uh, when it gets to putting the bid in, Australia will make a convincing case. The stadiums will be up to scratch if they're not now, and playing surfaces are part of that. The other half of the equation, however, Simon, is convincing the world of football that we have the football culture that can host the World Cup. And I think you know that's arguably the biggest challenge for Australia at the moment, is proving to people around the world where football is so important to them that we can actually cut the mustard. And, and it's on that level that the quality of the playing services might be, a, be problematic for us. It's certainly not going to help teams coming here and complaining about the, the facilities, but uh, that's a separate category from the actual bid itself. I've got no doubt that Frank Lowy and his team will absolutely have it spick and, a spick and span uh, when it gets to putting the, the documents on the table. But the other half of the equation, we've still got a bit of work to do. OK, talking of uh, cutting the mustard, the Jets, of course, desperately need the three points tonight. They need to defend perhaps a bit better than they did against Nagoya in the crucial areas and at the crucial moments. Yeah, well, and they've got to take some of their chances. And I think what we've realised is that, uh, that probably the difference between teams that have played in established leagues finish their opportunities. This was where they got stung against um, uh, Nagoya last match. And the, the bizarre thing is, the first reaction I have is the openness of the field. Of course, Ben Kandorovsky slips at the, at, the, at the crucial moment. Ogawa nicks in, pinches the ball and scores. What we see with this virtual replay is that Newcastle have enough bodies to have defused this. But most importantly, at the very start of it, as we see the view from the goal scorer, um, at the very start of this action, a team that plays with two holding midfielders, Simon, deploys that structure with the view to not getting caught on the counter-attack. And, and the opening shot of that virtual replay shows a team that is opening too much of the field to their opponents. And Asian teams love to counter-attack, particularly away from home. They got hurt badly by that against Nagoya last start. I'm sure Gary Van Egmond has paid attention to that fact tonight to make sure that they don't open the field up uh, when, when they're attacking and don't get caught on the counter-attack. And the disclaimer on, last, on the goal match day four, of course, was the fact that the referee interfered with Newcastle's attack and, and uh, Nagoya were good enough to respond. But it uh, doesn't take away from the fact that Newcastle have been leaky at defence in crucial moments. But moreover, they haven't punished their opponents when they've had the chances. And at this level of football, you have to do that. OK, one word answer, Harps. Are they going to do it tonight? Yes, yes or no? Yes. OK, we're 100% we hope... convinced. <laughs> it's yes, Mel. Back to you. <laughs> That's very good to know. Thanks very much for that, guys. Uh, we'll hear from you again You'll never a keep Harps later. to one word, will no, you? He's a passionate man, he Kimon. Is. Speaking of passionate men, Lubo Milicevic, he's welcome back into the side from suspension. Now, of course, he uh, he played so well in those the first few games. Just ask him because he'll tell you. But uh, a big bonus for the Jets. Yeah, and, and and don't we love it? I mean, he's such a such a larger than life character. I mean, personally, I've extolled his virtues many times. Um, of this particular iconic figure. I think he brings so much to this team. Not only is it his ability as a defensive organiser, he plays that classical libero role where he's able to, with the ball at his feet, he's able to penetrate and distribute the ball very well because of his speed and his ability. And not only that, it's his leadership skills, it's his willingness to win, and those are the key elements of his personality that Gary Van Eppon is going to need to be able to, uh, to harness to get the most out of his teammates. Well, j just on that, that is, that's been in the news, you know, uh, over the last couple of months. A few, I, I guess, bust-ups at training and, and with Gary Van Egmond and then they're smoothed over. We know he's not afraid to speak his mind. Is that what the Jets have been lacking, particularly with what happened in the A-League season just gone? Quite possibly, Mel. I think this is, a, this is a period of time where the Jets are going to define what happens in the next few years with this club. If they have aspirations to achieve, uh, then they need to set high standards for themselves, and people like Luba Milicevic are a core part of that. Um, and I think what it means is the implications for the rest of the team are that they either go along for the ride or the raised level of their own games and take him on at that level, because that's exactly what Lubo is trying to achieve when he's challenging his teammates to improve and uh, to have uh, aspirations. Uh, desire uh, as footballers. There's so many young guys that certainly you'd think what they need at the moment. Well, let's take a look at the all-important Group E table. Now, Simon mentioned a very favourable result for Newcastle and Beijing Guan uh, just moments ago. Nagoya had, uh, defeated Alson Hyundai 4-1 in the other match and that leaves things very wide open. It's second place is theirs for the taking for the Jets or Beijing. So uh, just a couple of points in it. They're both, uh, I guess, third and fourth 
uh, on four points each. But Olsen only on six points. Nagoya all the way at the top there on 11 points with first spot. Definitely wrapped up plenty of goals for, for them as well. All right, it's time to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll hear from the coach and captain. But for now, we'll leave you with some vision of one man desperate to uh, atone for last week. Sash Petrovsky dropped to the bench for last week, but he's back in the starting 11. You don't see that too often. Sasho Petrovsky with an uncharacteristically pretty sh soft touch in front of goal. He won that penalty there. He's desperate to atone. As mentioned, during the week he said he'd be keen to take the next penalty that comes his way. Well, another man that's been speaking during the week is coach was coach Gary Van Egmond. He says his team was preparing for the game of their lives and he's now speaking with Andy Harper. Gary, all or nothing tonight? Pretty much. Uh, for us, it's, it's fairly imperative we get three points tonight. How will that be reflected in your tactics? Look, we'll definitely be um, pressing higher up the park. Um, you know, I think we have to dictate the play and we have to take the initiative of, of looking to, uh, to break Guan down and, and to try and give Donny and Sash uh, decent service in the box. And um, if we can do that higher up the pitch in game possession, hopefully uh, we can deliver uh, the service that they need. Plenty of learning experiences for you and your team so far in the Champions League. Has there been enough time for those lessons to have been absorbed? Um, I think there's been some, some real good lessons uh, learnt. Uh, I think some will be learnt a little bit more over time and some have been uh, learnt fairly quickly. But uh, overall, it's been a, a great experience up until now and uh, one which the, the whole club has thoroughly enjoyed. The eye-catching player so far has been Vignaroli, even though he's injured. You know, how do you cover for him? Is it possible, given the circumstances at the moment? Well, he's our marquee player, realistically, right at this moment. So um, you, you can never... Uh, fully recover from a, a play of that elk uh, being out, but uh, we've got some um, some good young ones and some some real depth in that area. So uh, hopefully they're out for a big one in front of the home crowd. I wish you all the best, Gary. Good luck. Thanks, Harps. Gary Van Egmon there talking with Andy Harper. Mm. Kim on. Joe Wheelhouse, he's, uh, he's had a few false starts in this campaign mm. so far. Virus, uh, a car accident, an injury have all prevented him from playing a, a big role, or, despite the fact that Van Egmont has talked him up for a couple of weeks, wanting him to get a run. He does get that start tonight. He will be taking the set pieces as well, according yeah. to Van Egmont, as Fab Van Vigneroli normally does. What role should he expect to play in the middle with Adam Griffiths tonight? Well, Job's primary role will be that of a, of a facilitator. His role will be to occupy the middle of the pitch and make sure that Adam Griffiths can cover the defence quite comfortably. And that will also release Sasha Petrovsky to do his creative stuff up front. The most important thing is for him to stay central and that will also allow the likes of uh, the wide players such as Elric and Thompson and even Hoffman to get forward. But it's vital that he holds the shape there and doesn't expose Newcastle the way they were in that goal that they conceded against Nagoya that Andy Harper mentioned at the top of the show. And Adam Griffiths and Joe Wheelhouse working together a bit of a concern that they maybe haven't had a great deal of time to work together in this role? No, I don't really think so. They're both mature players. They're very experienced players. Uh, I think they understand playing that central midfield role. There won't be anything new for either of them. I think the, uh, the other key thing about uh, the balance in that particular centre of midfield is as long as there's the holding players, it also allows Lubo to exert himself in the game, which we're all hoping he'll be able to do with great effect. And Adam Griffiths playing his last game at home for Newcastle. Of course, there's one more in this campaign before he heads off to Gold Coast United. United. Uh, after that championship winning season, he probably hit a bit of a lull in his form, but a, a nice way. He, he's certainly improved in the last couple of months. Yeah, I think he's had a fine Champions League campaign. I think he's, uh, he's led the team well. I think he's been a steady, one of their probably their more consistent players. I think uh, it's also been a period of rebuilding for Newcastle as well, so it's pretty difficult for a player like that, particularly when he's on his way out to another team, to remain a, a key part and core part of the growth of the team. But nevertheless, I think he's acquitted himself in an outstanding fashion. He's a wonderful professional, real credit to, the, to, to football. Absolutely, and he certainly said that uh, he and the team owe it to the fans to come up with something good tonight. Well, his brother, who, or uh, former Newcastle Jetwell, is on loan for Beijing Guam, but won't be playing tonight, is Joel Griffiths. He's been in town a little bit early for the the birth of his new baby daughter, Giselle. Well he's, he's been... Yeah, absolutely. Congratulations. He's now speaking with Andy Halfer. 
Well, Joel, welcome home. And there is a little bit of talk that you timed your suspension to coincide with the birth of your first child. Congratulations. And is there any truth to that rumour? Uh, thank you, but uh, no, nah, there's no truth in that rumour. Um, you know, incidents happen on the field uh, and I didn't mean to uh, be suspended for this match. Um, though I am grateful that I am, but, uh, you know, things happen for a reason and so it seems I'm talking to you. How are you finding Beijing? Yeah, good. Uh, can't complain at the moment. Um, uh, despite um, the suspensions and whatnot, um, it's actually uh, been a pretty easy transition. Uh, the play's really good. The city's really nice, um, which, uh, you know, I was a little bit... Uh, wasn't really uh, familiar with um, Beijing. Um, and, um, yeah, it's just been really easy for mm. myself. And, obviously, uh, the teammates have really um, uh, appreciated me coming in. When the draw was made for the Champions League and Newcastle was drawn against Beijing, all your transfer talk and then will Joel play against us, will he not? Suspended, of course. Um, who rules your heart tonight, your paymaster Beijing or your former hometown of Newcastle? No, I don't think I should answer that. Um, I know you'd like me to, but um, I'm just going to... I'm here tonight just to watch my brothers play um, and if they weren't playing, I probably wouldn't be here. So um, that's what I'm doing tonight and hopefully they can both have really good games. A lot of talk about what happens to Joel Griffiths post-November. Are you any closer to a decision on whether you will come back to the A-League or stay with Beijing? Um, at the moment, I haven't really thought about it. Um, obviously, it's been a pretty busy busy couple of weeks for me um, with the birth of my daughter. So um, just play everything by ear and hopefully um, things will pan out uh, for, for the good. But um, as I said, I'm happy to be in Beijing to, uh, to uh, play for their team and their city. And if it happens to not work out over there, then I'm, I'm always um, got a home here in Newcastle, which, you know, probably after football, I'll, I'll end up living anyway. So, uh, you know, I just hope there's no hard feelings by um, either team. Well, thanks for your time. Good luck with everything and congratulations once again. Yeah, thank you. Hope's bye. Joel Griffiths there, a favourite son of Newcastle, certainly with a lot on his plate at the moment, sure. you would imagine, but serving out that suspension, so we won't get to see all three boys on the field at the moment. Um, OK, let's talk about the last time these two teams met. Of course, it didn't go the Jets' way. 2-0 over in Beijing. Uh, this guy, Nikolai Topper Stanley, will remember Wang Cheng King in particular. He certainly uh, gave him a runaround. Uh, how, how do these guys, Joel, Ryan Griffiths scoring this goal, how are they going to contain this guy? He's in the starting lineup tonight. Well, I think one of the key differences is it won't be so much of an unknown quantity. That was clearly the case last time uh, when uh, when they took advantage and scored early against Newcastle. Uh, he's a fine player, Wang Chang King. He's a he's a good player. Adam Dupuzo has the has the speed and and the temperament to to contain a player such as that. Other than that, it's difficult to see them scoring, particularly without uh, Joel Griffiths uh, playing. I'd imagine uh, the Chinese team Beijing will find it very difficult to score tonight. Um, but uh, equally, so have Newcastle. But nevertheless, nevertheless the team has grown, the, the, the tactics have grown, the awareness has grown, and I think the desire is there, and I think the team is very motivated to, uh, to achieve something tonight. Well, certainly, Gary Van Egmond said after the result that they perhaps weren't as prepared as they could be. We can expect a, a much more streamlined position tonight, no doubt. Well, second place is still on offer in Group E. Newcastle simply cannot afford to slip up. A clinical and determined Chinese opposition await them with their eye on that spot. After the break, see how it all unfolds with Simon Hill and Andy Harper. Adelaide United's fairy tale run to last year's Asian Champions League final is threatening to turn into a nightmare this season. The Mariners are gone, and tonight represents the last chance for Newcastle to salvage Australian pride. The omens aren't good. Australian club sides have defeated their Chinese equivalents just once in eight attempts at this level, but surely only victory against Beijing Goan will do for the Jets, especially as Nagoya have done them a favour by defeating Ulsan. 
Better news for Newcastle is the absence of Joel Griffiths from the opposition lineup through suspension. And Beijing have also left several others back in China. Gary Van Egmond has Lubo Milicevic and Adam Deputzo back from bands. No Ben Kantorowski, though, of course. He's suspended. Or Fabio Vignaroli, still troubled by a hamstring injury. The Jets being led out tonight by the Belmont under-13s, winners of the Toyota AFC Oh, what a feeling competition, and it must be a great feeling for them to be out with some of their heroes on such a big stage this evening. Matt Thompson gulping in the big ones. This is the biggest night for Newcastle. No more excuses. No more slack play, no more margin for error for the Jets. And what will be Adam Griffith's final home appearance at Newcastle Stadium. <laughs> Much talk about the pitch in the build-up to this game. In fact, the Beijing Guan coach, Li jiang Su has actually put in an official complaint to the match commissioner, but I mean, I mean, have to say it doesn't look too bad. Although there are oh, one or two uh, bare patches. The groundsmen have done the best they can in the circumstances. Heavy traffic on this surface, of course. And there's been some inclement weather in this part of the world as well. Newcastle public has not turned up in the greatest of numbers again tonight, but those that are here will give their team the backing that they will surely need if they're to remain in contention for a spot in the last 16. Much change, Beijing go on light up. They're still in the competition as well, so they need a result. Joel Griffiths or no Joel Griffiths, they will want the victory. Now, the Jets lineup showing four changes from the team that lost at home to Nagoya. Back in come Lubo Milicevic and Adam Deputo after serving suspensions. Joe Wheelhouse returns, as does Sasha Petrovsky. He'll play off on the shoulder of the Dutchman Donny de Groot. Ange Costanto, Ben Kantorowski, as mentioned, Brody Moy and Fabio Vignaroli miss out. Beijing go on, make seven changes. Some of their big names are missing. Xu Yunlong, Darko Matic, Huang Boen and, of course, Joel Griffiths. Uh, all out. And do watch out for the number seven, Wang Chang Ching, who caused the Jets real trouble down the right hand side on match day one. That game, of course, won by the Chinese outfit by two goals to nil. Our referee tonight is uh, from Qatar, Abdul Abdurrahman. Well, Gary Van Egmond's team had a nightmare start to their Champions League endeavours in Beijing. A horror show in the first 45 minutes. They must be significantly better tonight, or Li Jiang Su's side will surely put them to the sword and complete a miserable campaign for the two Australian clubs. Asian Champions League hopes are on the line. Can they keep their dreams alive, Andy Harper? Well, I certainly think they can, Simon. Uh, if they start the way they did against Nagoya, that first 15 minutes, match day four, was very impressive. Just missed a goal to cap things off. So if Newcastle can repeat that feat, but learn from the mistake, and they get a good early opportunity with a free kick in a very handy position. Oh, for Fabio Vignaroli at this point. Yep, he delivered some uh, crackers early on against Nagoya. The foul was by the Cameroonian William Modibo, tugging back on the shirt of Donny de Groot. Free kick duties have instead been passed on to Joe Wheelhouse. Plenty of height to aim for. Topos Stanley up there. And a good fist away by the goalkeeper, Xi Yang. That was a decent early opportunity for the Newcastle Jets. 
Gary Van Egmond will have demanded an energetic start, but also a composed start. You mentioned it in pre-game, Andy. Got to be careful not to leave holes at the back. Well, they've come so far since the wooden spoon in the Hyundai A-League last season, and they've set themselves up with some good performances. They've dropped points when they shouldn't have, but that's part of the learning experience. But you do get the feeling it all comes down to their last home game this evening. Notwithstanding the fact that Ulsan got a touch-up from Nagoya, it means Nagoya are guaranteed through to the round of 16. That It's a real scrap now for second place in this group. And Newcastle, with their last home game of the group stage, really need maximum points, and that'll set up match day six beautifully. Yeah, that results in Japan, a real bonus for the Jets. As we uh, said in the pre-match show, what it means is... If they can get the three points tonight, Newcastle, a draw would be good enough in Korea on the 20th of May. Obviously, that's two big ifs, but there's some encouragement for Newcastle. Now, Ryan Griffiths setting off on the chase. He's uh, been vocal in the press this week as saying that he wouldn't mind a move back to uh, Newcastle for the next A-League season. Good performance tonight would uh, certainly put him in the mind of Gary Van Egmond if he's not already. Yeah, he knows uh, Ryan Griffiths very well. And he would be a good acquisition to the Hyundai A-League. You know, there's enormous pressure on this Beijing team, Simon. This, of course, the team from the capital of China. All the politics in China that goes with this football team. The fans aren't overly happy with the performances so far. That's a good ball by Adam Griffiths. Thompson getting forward towards the throats. Headed away by Yang Pu, the Beijing Guan captain. And that's what Gary Van Egmon wants the likes of Thompson and Indeed. Tarek Elrich to do on the flanks. Indeed, and he wants his team to press high up the field, as we heard in the pre-game, to force the error and then to play off that mistake with possession in advanced parts of the field. And it's worked so far quite well for the Jets. They just need to make sure the back door remains closed. Yep, one clean sheet in 17 matches in all competitions for the Jets. That really tells its own story. Only if you're one for stats, Beijing haven't scored in any of their last three. Two in the Chinese Super League and one in the Asian Champions League. Well, they've only scored two goals in this competition. 2-0 against Newcastle on match day one, and they haven't troubled the scorer since. Back-to-back, single-goal losses against Ulsan, Hyundai and a nil or draw with Nagoya. Handball against Lubo Milicevic. Big bonus for the Jets to have him back tonight. Speaking to Gary Van Egmond today, he was saying that aside of Craig Moore and Lucas Neal, he thinks Lubo Milicevic is the best Australian central defender around, which is praise indeed. This is Yan, who's operating on the right with Wang Cheng Ching on the left. If he's as effective on that flank as he was on the right on match day one, then Tarek Elrich is going to have a problem. Yeah, he's a very exciting player. He caused Newcastle no end of trouble. And even considering that, they were right in that game, Newcastle. Sash Petrovsky had a couple of good chances to level the score, and... The second and killer goal, let's not forget, only came three minutes into injury time in the second half. So that's another case, really, you could mount an argument of one that got away from Newcastle. It was, though, in the first 45 halves, I think you'll agree, a bit of a horror show defensively. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's no covering from that. That was... And they've come a long way since then. Nikolai Topol Stanley, the man on, in possession at the moment, I guess the outstanding example. But this is as much psychological as physical for Newcastle. They can realise the pressure that comes with being a Beijing Goan player. A small matter of 10 to 12 million audience in Beijing for this game tonight. It's not even China-wide. The local government tipped in 4 million Australian dollars to boost the campaign. Desperate to win the Chinese Super League, which they haven't done yet. Runner-up on a number of occasions. Things aren't going great. A bit of disquiet, an unstable club, 
we're led to believe. The point of saying all that is there will be, never be a better time for Newcastle to beat Beijing than tonight. Now Hoffman going for the ball in the far post and referee's whistle is blown for a foul on the defender. Yang Pu, the uh, victim. Jason Hoffman, the offender. Yeah, it's nice work from Matt Thompson, who took up an innocuous, seemingly innocuous, a sneaky position on the byline. Just would advise Jason Hoffman to have a little bit more conviction in attacking, attacking the ball there. If nothing else, to put the complete frightness through your opposing defender. Well, there's certainly a height differential between uh, Hoffman and Yang Pu. it will be to uh, take the throw in veteran of uh, China's 2002 World Cup campaign under the legendary Bora Milutinovic now back in international coaching with Iraq now go free says to Ryan Griffiths you go son interesting haircut being sported by uh, one of the Griffiths brothers Pass by Shui Dong Lang. Now it's Sasha Petrovsky who was cut off at the pass by Zheng Lang. Yeah, it was good cover from Lang. Petrovsky just took the ball a little bit too close to the defender who was approaching. Read the situation nicely because it was potentially very sticky for Beijing. Hoffman finding a metre of space and then. Two green shirts converge upon him. Hoffman will play on that wide right position. Elrich looking for movement and got it from Petrovsky, who is perhaps a bit unfortunate. Yang Pu's clearance. Wang Chang Ching having to make up some grounds. Milicevic, always a superb reader of the game. Hoffman wins the header. Suggestion of handball against Petrovsky. Linesman's flag was a little late. <laughs> Sasha Petrovsky just uh, pointing out the stain on the shirt was on the chest rather than the arm. He's consistent, Sasha Petrovsky. It's never his fault. Correct. Petrovsky, by the way, one of six Jets in the starting 11 tonight who's carrying a yellow card into this game. So, uh, one more. They would miss potentially that crucial game in Korea against Ulsa. Nikolai Topol Stanley is another, and he's given away the free kick, which will be taken by Zhao Ting. Flat delivery, a little too flat from uh, Beijing's perspective. They're under pressure from Matt Thompson, who's done ever so well to win it. Now Hoffman wins the 50 52 with Zhu Yifan. Pass was wayward, unfortunate. And it was unfortunate because Newcastle had pinched the ball nicely, defended the free kick. Very well, Zhu Ting with the left foot does deliver a very nice free kick. Usually, Newcastle defended it well and they set the counter attack nicely until Jason Hoffman just got the weight totally wrong. He did well to win the ball, he showed good muscle on that occasion and intent to secure possession, but the pass let him down, let his team down because that was a promising opening. Now there's some space for Wang Chang Ching on the left. Elrich's pace gets him back in contention. And he's done well, Tarek Elrich. There's uh, surely a high foot from Gofui. Referee not interested, and there was 
No support from Jan down that right-hand side. Well, there aren't many people here tonight, Simon, but they're making a great noise. A very reliable source tells me that the local federation has scheduled junior matches for tonight. I find that absolutely mystifying. And that will have some impact on the crowd. Gents with all the possession at the moment, 68%. So a uh, sizable portion of that has been inside their own half, it must be said. I'm with you, Harps, I can't understand that at all. Everybody's supposed to be working together, aren't they? Anyway, Petrovsky wins the corner off Modibo. Or William, if you prefer. There he is, the Cameroonian. Former Gil Vicente in uh, Portugal, Pacos de Ferreira. Had a year in Kuwait as well. They're great travellers, some of the uh, African players. Now, the uh, Chinese goalkeeper has got down on his haunches. I'm not quite sure what that was for, whether it was tactical. Or was he saying he uh, got a kick to the ankle? Interesting by uh, Xi Yang. He just crouched down. As if to say, the referee needs to blow the whistle here. It's a very interesting selection. The ref was having nothing of it. It was play on. Newcastle took the corner. Either that, or he was looking to recoil his muscle fibres to the point where I'm, I'm scratching here, Simon, but it was one of the strangest things I've seen. Risky tactic when you're about to face a corner. Played every Champions League match. Good harrying by Petrovsky again. Looks in the mood tonight, Sasha Petrovsky. Perhaps a little bit stung following being left on the bench against Nagoya, then of course winning and missing the penalty. He feels as though he's rather been made the scapegoat for that defeat. This is Yan. Zhu Yifan under pressure from both Thompson and Adam Griffiths. It's good pressure by the Jets, although Joe Wilhouse has now conceded the free kick. Well, they're leaving plenty in the tackles, Newcastle. Joe jo Wilhouse transgressing on that occasion in the eyes of the referee. And it's a robust start from the home team. Very similar to the opening 15-20 uh, minutes or so against Nagoya. Let's hope it's not the same result. Well, the quality of the opposition is definitely lesser. And uh, Newcastle can take heart from that. Wonderful team, Nagoya. Beijing, worthy opponents. Not in the same register. And if Newcastle can maintain the rage from this point on, they should be good things. They've started positively. Fitness will be an issue as the match drags on. Concentration as well. Commitment to the cause for the Jets. Beijing Guan lying in eighth place at the moment in the Chinese Super League. And they've got a match away at the league leaders, Changchun Yatai, at the weekend, which is perhaps why they've left six or seven of their more regular players back in China. I have to say that's perhaps a bit of a slap in the face for the Asian Champions League, given that they're still in contention. And it's had another big slap this week as well, Harps, with Sharjah from the Emirates deciding to withdraw because they want to concentrate on domestic competition. I just find that astonishing. Well, Sharjah are in danger of relegation. They've just sacked their coach and the new coach has come in and said to the board or whoever runs the show over there, much better we stay alive in the domestic league. Uh, it can't escape without heavy sanction. Devalues the whole tournament. Totally, yeah. totally. That's good work by Jason Hoffman. 
Scarp is away from two players, has support from Adam Griffiths and probably should have used him. Industrial challenge by uh, Joe Wilhouse, and it'll be a goal kick. Well, in the initial instance, Jason Hoffman did brilliantly. He skipped past two defenders with tremendous elan. But then his decision-making let him down. You're quite right, he should have released the wide play. This is beautiful work. Youngster just back, his second game back from knee reconstructive work. And at that point, the decision-making let him down. Lafuso showing good anticipation. And again, Jets just a bit sharper, a bit quicker to the ball. Put the commentator's curse on it, didn't I? Yeah, but what you were alluding to, Simon, is, is, is very accurate. You know, they're up for it, Newcastle, and two-thirds of their job, as Gary Van Engman told us before the game, they're acquitting beautifully. They just need to take the pressure off themselves in that final moment. That's where they're getting a bit of a rush of blood to the head. The pass is, is being mishit, or they're taking the wrong option, or they're rushing it. And two-thirds of the job so far has been very impressive. It's that final third work that Van Egmond will be hoping changes quickly so that they can ram home this advantage that they've got in possession and territory terms. Lubo Milicevic gaining great applause from the home fans for his marauding run down the left. Here he is again. It's been a long time since fans have uh, chanted Lubo's name at a football ground. Now, Petrovsky. Took too long, did he? Sasha Petrovsky! Oh! No more than a metre wide. It seemed as though he delayed too long, Sasha Petrovsky. And he had everyone full, including the Beijing defence, importantly the Beijing defence. But he opened the angle beautifully. That could so easily have gone in. They're flying at the moment, Newcastle. We said that last match day against Nagoya. They have to take control of these situations and force home the advantage. They've got Beijing on the ropes. Everything's going to a gold jersey at the moment, apart from that pass by Hoffman. This is Jan. Took a touch off Milicevic. Jan's continued his run. Nikolai Topol Stanley epitomising that 100% commitment. Well, it appears they're not going to die wandering the Jets. This is Xiao Ting. Short for Go Fui. Foul by Wilhouse. Just a bit too eager, Joe Boylehouse. Uh, he's been, had, had plenty of red meat the last few days, you fancy. But strangely enough, this was an, uh, an infringement decided upon by the assistant referee. He flagged. The referee was allowing play to go on. I'm not quite sure why the referee didn't have a sufficient view of that. Nevertheless, the right decision in the end was made. Was, well, the wrong person, in my opinion. Nevertheless, away we go. Shui Donglang to take the free kick. Modibo wins the header. Jan had a lash at it and didn't really make any connection. Still Beijing threatened, and that's easy for Ben Kennedy. Twenty minutes played. Nil-nil. Good start, though, by the Jets. Good play, and Ryan Griffiths out-muscled by Lubo Milicevic, and he had to be from a Jets' point of view. And he did, but the real concern there was not the fact that Milicevic almost got shown up for speed by Ryan Griffiths, but it was the space in front of Milicevic. It was that hole behind the front man that Beijing found too easily. Joe Wheelhouse, Adam Griffiths perhaps getting things a little bit cross-wired there. A good opening for Beijing.
another potential opportunity for Newcastle. Joe Wilhouse may not be Fabio Vignaroli from set pieces, but needs to try and find similar delivery to the Italian. It was a bit too flat, and Adam Griffiths really just falls into a casual back heel. Comes out for Thompson. Now to Puto. Jets throw it. Almost directly in front of the squadron. They're looking for Petrovsky, shouting's header. Go free. Kicks out Yan on the left. Thanks to Yan and Wang Chang Ching have changed flanks. That's a clever header by Donny de Croats. Petrovsky holds it up and should have used Hoffman. He should have. He's got to, re he's got to reward, reward the run of Jason Hoffman, who was free, still is, has the ball now. Tarek Elrich finds him. Into good centre, fisted clear by Zhi Yang. Wheelhouse, first touch wasn't great, second touch much better. Needs movement. Back to De Puzzo. Wheelhouse. Long for Hoffman. He just couldn't twist the neck muscles around enough. Well by Milicevic and Beijing belatedly showing some urgency. Xu Yifan held up by Adam Griffiths. It's helter-skelter stuff at times. That's great, isn't it? Fantastic pace and edge to the game. Ryan Griffiths going for goal. And Newcastle doing their best to control the momentum of the game, but it has such pace to it. Adam Griffiths, again, even in these early stages, has been fantastic in the centre of midfield. Some telling tackles. And they've had more than enough chances already. That last header from Jason Hoffman. You can't blame a youngster, I guess, for having a crack from that angle. But again, it was an option issue. He probably could have cushioned a header back for Sash Petrovsky, who was in front of the goal. Adam Griffiths again. Gold Coast bound, of course. In fact, he might be playing against Beijing again. Gold Coast United have a sister club relationship with uh, Beijing, and they're trying to tee up a friendly match at the Bird's Nest, which you'll uh, remember from the Beijing Olympics ahead of the next A League season. This is Hoffman. Go for Lubo Milicevic. He's uh, barking instructions again from the back, Lubo Milicevic. Real leader on the park, which is perhaps what the Jets needed. Although, well, uh, if you believe some of the local press here, one or two of the younger members of the squad have not taken too kindly to it. Latest uh, fracas involving. Big Lubo and uh, Sean Rooney on the training pitch. All smoothed over now, we're told. Oil House wants to go over the top. Matt Thompson. On a nutmeg shouting. He picked his moment, didn't he, Tom? Right in front of the squadron. They loved it. It didn't come off. It could have. And more impressive was the way Matt Thompson retrieved that situation. It was a shank of a switching of play from Joe Wheelhouse, but Thompson turned it into something. There's nobody more Newcastle than uh, Matt Thompson. Any for your thoughts, Joel Griffiths tonight? You asked him uh, pre-game harps who he was uh, going for, if you like.
He was very non-committal, wasn't he? I did put him on the spot. He's absolutely loving his time in Beijing. Just buzzing about the quality of the city and, and the experience he's having. He's scored his share of goals in the Super League as well. Although now he has to cool his heels for a five-week spell. That is a big issue for Newcastle. Does Joel Griffiths return for the final seven games of next A-League season? Or do they cash in on the business that might be available to them and lose their cornerstone player? Yep, it's a tricky one. That's a good pass through by Petrovsky. Hoffman's away. Oh, Jason Hoffman should have scored for Newcastle. Credit to the goalkeeper, Xi Yang. But Hoffman should have made it 1-0 Jets. Well, credit to the defence. In the initial instance, they were breached with some good work. Petrovsky, beautiful pass. And Hoffman should have done better. But William does very well to just make Hoffman second guess. And then Yang Ji comes in, the goalkeeper, spread himself beautifully. Well, he knows he should have scored. Never yet on the score sheet for the Jets, Jason Hoffman. Maybe now's the moment. He goes down in the box, appeals for a penalty, mainly by the crowd, it has to be said. And again, Newcastle really knocking on the door. Top of Stanley. Milicevic, everybody's forward for the Jets, Bartarek Elrich. Modibo wins a good header, though, for Beijing through yet there's a bit of space for him only ryan griffiths in the middle he'll dart towards the near post and yan went for goal not a bad option perhaps and well done ben kennedy because out of the corner of his eye he would have seen ryan griffiths steaming in for the rebound did very well good composure the young keeper Side flag raised against Petrovsky. Well, you can't take your eyes off this one for a minute. Well, this is Jason Hoffman, the chance that fell. Muffled claims for a penalty. I'm with the referee. I'd wave play on for that one. As he did. Those who will argue the other way, Harps, will say no contact was made with the ball. I'm not saying I'm one of them. Well, Newcastle ahead in the foul counts, but uh, I'm sure Gary Van Abel won't be too disconcerted about that provided it doesn't lead to uh, too many yellow cards those on the brink of a ban numbering six is Thompson waiting for support which arrives in the shape of the Puzo he tackles Xiao Ting he's messed up subsequently though Thompson goes down again there are loud shouts and again they're mainly from the crowd Futsa swings across and it's too deep for Petrovsky. It's coming straight back at Beijing, though, at every opportunity at the moment. Newcastle, though, needs something to show for their efforts. Spurn, two good chances. There's Milicevic. He's playing as a subsidiary forward at the moment. Petrovsky, good build-up play, and again Thompson goes down, and again there's no foul. Elrich swings it back in. Ludibo's header. Thompson challenging, Milicevic too. And Beijing escape again. And now this is the problem for the Jets. When Beijing counter, they've got numbers. Go for it. Sui Dong Lak, Ryan Griffiths. Yeah. 
chance for handball against one of the Griffiths brothers. Jets will get the throw in instead. Well, it's the, it's the one problem they've got at the moment. In pushing so hard, and particularly when they've got the feel for it, Milicevic joining in their attack. It, the back half of the field remains open, and Beijing, in the first instance, looking to clear their lines, and they're doing that reasonably well. On the odd occasion, it's falling nicely to one of their midfielders, principally two or sweet, and the counter-attack is certainly on. Hoffman. Space to run at the fullback, but he showed too much of it to uh, Yang Pu, who is then judged to have fouled the uh, Jets striker and gets a yellow card. I have to say, I didn't think there was too much in that, but uh, maybe the replay will prove me wrong. Well, what I liked about this with Jason Hoffman, he just he did run the ball too close to Yang Pu, engaging the defender, but he did look. The positive side of this was that he actually looked to exploit the space in behind the defender. Showed good instinct. His touch let him down a little bit. Just his second game back, he's had the two chances that could have sent Newcastle to the lead. Two great chances as well. Well, my apologies to the referee. He did get that right, and the 34 cap Chinese veteran becomes the first player of either team to go into the book. Now, what can Wheelhouse do with this free kick? That's a decent one. Up went the throat, and it'll be a corner for the Jets. Well, he's putting plenty on him, Joe Wheelhouse. Perhaps just a little bit behind the line of the run of the players, and they had to prop momentarily. But they're still, they're winning the physical battles, uh, Newcastle. There's plenty of traffic in there. It's good attention from the Jets and well defended. And we're not even a week out after the release of the new football curriculum, which emphasises technique. And, of course, we'll all herald the need for that. But what we've seen so far is the physical element to the game that we mustn't ever lose. There's Newcastle on that register doing a fantastic job. Silk and steel. The perfect combo. That's uh, Wang Chang Ching, who's... Remain prostrate on the deck. You know, Asian teams in particular, because we're now part of the AFC, Simon, come to Australia, and at the forefront of their mind, they know they're in for, or they're expecting to be in for a physical battle. It's almost a shame not to let them have it. And it's the head clash there, Donny De Groot. Wang Cheng Ching on the unfortunate end of it. And Newcastle, after 34 minutes, have certainly certainly made this a self-fulfilling prophecy for Beijing. They know they're in for a hell of a game. Well, the Jets have been hammering on the door. Can they kick it open from this corner? It's Ryan Griffiths, a full tilt, conceding another. Wang Chang Ching is back on the park. He's OK. Is that how the training ground bust-ups start? Levo's almost completed the set of his own team. Now he's working through the opposition. If it brings the Jets a goal, I'm sure they won't care. Again, Ryan Griffiths, good header clear. And he picked out a teammate too, which was Yan. Oof, and uh, Zhu Yifan. If he could have picked out Ryan Griffiths' return run on that right-hand side, the Jets were wide open. Well, it just emphasises the importance of the intervention from Matt Thompson. Look at Milicevic forward again. A bit too deep. Thompson almost made something of it. He's had real licence to roam, hasn't he, uh, Lubo Milicevic? Well, Kim on talked about it, made the point, I thought, expertly in the pre-game show. And the, the, the better Adam Griffiths and particularly Joel, Joe Wheelhouse do in anchoring that centre circle area, Milicevic will get the sniff, and he will advance his position and add to the attack. It is a terrific variable for Newcastle to be able to utilise. I remember him doing exactly the same thing back in 2004, playing for Australia against Indonesia in Perth. It's a hallmark of his game as a, as a young player coming through. We, we always enjoyed watching Lubo do that. 
Champions League we've seen it against Ulsan. He created or was heavily involved in the in the goals that were created because he joined in the attack. Right idea from uh, Adam Griffiths. Hoffman just went a bit too early. He's been heavily involved in the play, Jason Hoffman. Oh, Beijing, I'm sure. Oh, Please to be paused so they can uh, take their breath. 13 times the Jets have had the ball inside the Chinese club's penalty box, but as yet, They've not breached Xi Yang's goal. Here's Wang Changqing on his preferred right flank. Got the ball a bit uh, caught up between the feet. And was uh, a bit late on uh, Adam Griffiths as well. It's a yellow card. And got into trouble by miscontrol, which on the evidence we've seen of this player is not a common occurrence. He was, I have to say, picked out by an exquisite switch of play by Sweet. And there wasn't a lot in that. That's a cheap yellow card. The referee a little bit hasty, in my opinion. That's his uh, second yellow of the group stage, by the way. So he misses Beijing's final match against Nagoya through suspension. <laughs> That's surely a foul throw. Why is that never penalised these days? Cannot understand that. If more Lutheran's a chucker, then so is Zheng Lang. Well, there are a couple of foul throws given in the Kawasaki Central Coast matches, I recall. That's another foul by Job Wheelhouse. They started to uh, rack up against the Jets number 12. They have to be careful. That's his uh, third, I'm told, by Kieran Ostatsman. <laughs> Having just said, a sweet Dong Yang came up with a beautiful switch of play. Someone should also teach him the rules. That free kick he looked to just dribble away. Not sure why the referee didn't. Here we go. <laughs> Foul throws, basics of the game, escaping seasoned professionals. Well, Harps were six minutes away from the half-time whistle. I'm sure Gareth and Egmont will be pleased, but similar to the performance against Nagoya, their dominance hasn't been rewarded with a goal. No, but that will concern him. It certainly will concern him, but it won't be a focus of the half-time chat. The players know exactly the chances have been squandered. There might be a quiet word in the ear of one or two about positions they're taking up or options they're exercising. I actually think the focus of Van Egmont's attention will be twofold. Maintain the rage, but make sure we don't get hurt off balance as we did against Nagoya. There have been the merest of signs that they've courted danger in pushing too high up. Don't kick the ball against the referee. That'll be the first point. Five minutes to go before the break. Jets nil, Beijing nil. Joe Boylehouse. Pretty sure that was a shot on goal, and he's got a corner for his troubles. Which maybe justified the effort. Well, it will serve to keep... Beijing pinned down. They've had to defend very earnestly from these set-piece positions. Newcastle's fifth corner, they've been free kicks to defend as well. They've certainly earned their supper, the Beijing defence, so far. Can they make one tell, Newcastle? Oh, Hoffman just got the body position wrong to retrieve. Thompson did much better to twist his frame around. to go all the way back to Ben Kennedy. Oh, 
Thompson had time and space. And he picked out Zhu Yifan. Wheelhouse again is like a terrier every time the green shirts pick up the ball. Well, that part of the game they're just doing brilliantly, Newcastle. Griffiths, Wheelhouse, Lubo Milicevic, the three of those have been the hub of Newcastle's very successful first 41 minutes. Successful minus the goals. They really should have converted. Hooked clear by Zhang Lang. Top of Stanley's header. Milicevic. Petrovsky. Thompson. Petrovsky tries to twist away from his man. Another corner for the Jets. That's relentless. The incoming tide of gold shirts has been relentless. They've stretched Beijing, they've hounded and harassed, they just haven't broken through. Corner number six, Wheelhouse will sling in. Can they get one telling head onto the end of the cross? Well, there's lots of height there. Hoffman, top of Stanley, Adam Griffiths. Sadly, they pick out the goalkeeper. That's a real shank from Go Hui. And again, the Jets retrieve it. Thompson. And he picks out his opposite number eight, Yang Pu. And Ryan Griffiths, who's been almost a solitary figure in the Beijing attack. Bit of space for him here. Time to measure the cross. Well, Yang gave him a hospital pass there, Ryan Griffiths. Well, they're a little punch drunk, Beijing. When the opportunities have arrived for them to attack, and they've had some good openings. This is the, just to repeat the concern for Van Egmont. But so rattled are they by the physical confrontation and from the amount of defending, last ditch defending they've had to do, that time they get into the front third, they're looking punch drunk. Final minutes of the first half, at least in normal time. Oh, there's going to be just the one minute of stoppage time. That's a beautiful ball by Ryan Griffithson. Well anticipated too by Ben Kennedy. He had to get there first, and he did. Good goalkeeping. He's had a very quiet first 45 minutes, Ben Kennedy, but when called upon, earned his corn. Hoffman tried to ride the challenge now. Yang Pu has already been booked. That was a clear foul. Well, I'm pretty sure that's a Qatari official saying, that's your last one. Yeah, I think you picked that completely. It's a clear case for a yellow card, a, that's stand a alone. Clear yellow, isn't it? Should have been. What, what saved him was it was the centre circle. That's the only thing I can think of. First half that has belonged almost entirely to the Jets. 
The only thing missing, a goal. Sasha Petrovsky and Jason Hoffman have both spurned good opportunities. Will that prove costly in the final analysis? Good first 45, though, by the Jets. And the half-time scoreline at Newcastle Stadium is blank. Newcastle Jets nil, Beijing Goan nil. Well, in musical terms, this has been everything but the goal so far as Newcastle are concerned. They've dominated the first 45 against Beijing, who at times have looked rather shell-shocked by the Jets' determined approach. The only thing missing is that final touch, and that's why Gary Van Egmond re remains frustrated. Sasha Petrovsky and Jason Hoffman have come closest. On the break, the scoreline remains blank. The possession heavily in favour of the home team. They've had double the amount of shots on goal. They've had uh, two of those on target, which in fact equals the amount of shots they had on target in the entire game against Nagoya. Six corners they forced the home team. They've even won the foul count too, but they just haven't been able to break Beijing down as yet. Let's have a look at the first half highlights, which have Andy Harper almost been exclusively dominated in an attacking sense by the Jets. Familiar ring to it, isn't it, Simon? Although they've stretched this out for 45 minutes, whereas last match day it was after 15 minutes when they had to capitalise. Petrovsky had everyone fooled and wriggled his way beautifully clear there. You know, that would have been a finish to remember had it come off. Look at the number of players he has to deceive. Does it beautifully. The speed of the feet and then the audacity to go for that far post. He just didn't quite have the tail in the final analysis or else Yang would have been picking one out of the back of the net. In the 23rd minute, it was uh, Jason Hoffman with a header on target. He's been heavily involved for the home team. He has. I mean, he can forgive a youngster for trying to score from there, but really, look at Sash Petrovsky's position. Right on the six-yard box with the whole goal in front of him. The best option for Hoffman is to cushion the header to Petrovsky. The next best is to loop the header to the far post. He's taken the lesser of the three, unfortunately, for the Jets. Four minutes later, he had perhaps the best opportunity of the entire first 45 minutes. Great ball by Petrovsky, too. Be beautiful work, Sash Petrovsky, and that was the moment, wasn't it? it the credit the defending from William, the Cameroonian, he just did enough to put Hoffman off his game, and then Yang came off his line and, and, and blocked the space beautifully. But at this point, it should have been 1-0 Newcastle, without doubt. Well, he's never scored for uh, the Jets at senior level. He may never get a better opportunity than that. He was involved again a minute later. A penalty claim for the Jets, turned down by the Qatari official. Definite contact here, but what swings it in favour of the defender and the referee's decision, in my opinion, is that he doesn't really have control of the ball. That miscontrol means it's up for grabs, and the Chinese defender is within his rights to get his body into that space and contest there. You could mount a claim that the contact forced a penalty, but to be frank, I'm with the referee. I think in that situation, he pulled the right rein. Well, that's been the story of the first half, and uh, Beijing, as we say, have been a little shell-shocked, really. This was perhaps their best opportunity. Ryan Griffiths with a beautiful ball, and credit to Ben Kennedy. I think that's one of the moments of the first half. Notwithstanding, in general terms, Newcastle have been very impressive. It was a former Newcastle player in Ryan Griffiths who has launched one of the moments of the match. That is a beautifully executed penetrating pass, great touch, great vision, and credit the goalkeeper Ben Kennedy who read the situation with real aplomb. So that's the way it is at the interval. The uh, score sheet is blank, and the Jets still hold out hope that they will be in the hats in the last 16. A lot of work still to do, of course. They need the three points here, and then a draw would be good enough in Korea against Ulsan. Well, it's been all about the Jets in the first half, and uh, a story, too, really, about Jason Hoffman. He's been involved in pretty much everything. He's had a great opportunity, a penalty appeal, and he's uh, perhaps on occasion made the wrong decision as well. But he's a young kid who's had a big involvement in a good Jets performance thus far. Can they get the goal, though, that will keep them in contention in this Asian Champions League? All right, let's uh, go and get the view now of uh, former Socceroo Kim Ontaliadoris. He's uh, down pitch side with Mel McLaughlin. Mel.
Thanks very much, Simon. And I can tell you it's a lot cooler down here in the last 45 minutes. Uh, Kimon, all right, we, we know the momentum and the possession is all with the Jets at the mm. moment, but how wary should they be of being possibly caught out on the break because they've got so many numbers up? Yeah, well, I mean, the, the, it's going exactly to script. Newcastle are dominating, they're creating a handful of chances. But, of course, I think we've seen evidence on the counter-attack uh, that, uh, that they can be very vulnerable. This is a good example here of where Beijing are able to counter-attack very quickly on a two-on-two -two situation. And had they had the present th uh, the, the additional support, they may well have converted this into a goal-scoring opportunity. This is the danger for Newcastle. But other than that, I think, think they're playing very well and it's going uh, perfectly according to plan. OK, well, again, they, they as, as I said, they have the momentum up front but what is going to will something have to change for them to take that killer blow and find the back of the net yes i think so it's extremely congested in the uh, in the beijing uh, uh, defense uh, i think uh, newcastle are playing a little bit narrow i think they need to play wider and, and and spread the defense out i'd like to see sash petrovsky spending more time in and around the box so it may well be that one of the young guys comes on wide to generate some more energy but sash definitely needs to be in and around the box because in my book he's the guy who's going to make the difference tonight are you satisfied with donny de Groot and his contribution well, I think he's had a difficult role because he would have had at least two or three players around him at any one time. But I'm not too sure that he's been able to contribute as he may would have may have liked. I'd rather see Sash in that role now. Okay, thanks very much, Kimon. Thanks very much, guys. Good work. Well, there you go. There's a blaster on the pass, a Newcastle Breakers shirt from years ago, and a Jet scarf and a Dutch hat. There's a combination, helps. God bless him. <laughs> I wonder if he's one of the rowdies. Well. He used to adorn the Southern Hill. Or well, one of the hills. I've got my geography and my compass wrong, perhaps. Look at these two guys. They were the, here against Nagoya in exactly the same get-up. And if the, pan, uh, the uh, camera could just go down a little bit, I'll tell you what, they're brave guys wearing stretch lycra on the streets of Newcastle, especially at night. They've got uh, tight blue trunks on over those uh, suits. It's great stuff. And it's uh, all contributing to... Uh, a fantastic atmosphere here at Newcastle Stadium tonight. May not be uh, big in numbers, the crowd, but they've certainly got behind their team who've rewarded them with a really good first-half performance. Beijing, for their part, you'd imagine, might have had a bit of a roasting from their coach at the break. They've been very much second best. Two Griffiths brothers... As the uh, second half gets underway, Beijing in all green. No changes by uh, either coach. I'm sure there will be uh, some at some stage, Harps. You've been looking at the Jets bench. What would be your fancy if you were Gary Van Egmont? Well, we live in hope that Casper Tafta is going to get an opportunity, an extended opportunity. And he's one I'd certainly consider. But unknown to many viewers or any viewers of the Hyundai A League, Peter Haynes local junior, he's no junior anymore, he's 26, scored a bag full of goals in the local league and in fact he did come through the NSL with Newcastle United. He's a striker with a great feel for the game and this could be the stage for him to announce his arrival in the new era of football. He's a wonderful prospect and I wouldn't at all hesitate where I gave an England. There he is on screen, the right of screen there, Peter Haynes would not hesitate to throw him a chance. 23 goals in 18 matches for Broadmeadow Magic last year. Local league's top scorer. can also tell you his fiancée, Rachel, is Jason Hoffman's sister. So uh, if Hoffman was the man to come off, then there might be a bit of a family feud. You'd fancy, though, uh, Harps, if somebody was to come off, without wishing to be unkind to him, it might be Donny Dethroat. He's not really been heavily involved for the Jets. Hey, it's the obvious choice. And you know, the, a team that had 63% of possession, six or seven corners in their fashion, in their favour, these are the games a striker loves. This is a chance for him to get involved and can't honestly recall you mentioning his name, and at least not more than once or twice. I, I have been disappointed. He hasn't really caught the eye, in truth, through the whole campaign, but he's obviously doing a job that Van Egmond's comfortable with. And he's the man who counts. Well, 
was the throat challenging Zhu Yai Fan. This is uh, Sui Dong Lang, who sweeps it out to find Ryan Griffiths. Two in the middle for Beijing. Goal kick Newcastle. Ryan Griffiths just had to uh, play a lone furrow, really, for the most part for Beijing. Spent two years, of course, with uh, Newcastle in the old NSL. 52 appearances, just eight goals. <laughs> Foul on De Hrots by William Modibo. Wheelhouse out to Hoffman. Quickly closed down by Ryan Griffiths. Showing he can defend as well as attack. Jets will hope to keep that first half momentum. That's where it went to sadly awry against Nagoya a fortnight ago. As uh, Yan tries to burst through the middle. Top of Stanley covering. No doubt Beijing have taken a leaf out of Newcastle's book. They're way more advanced up the field without the ball. They're looking to condense the space. It's exactly what Newcastle did very well in the first half, and more than a matter of hoping. Tarek Elrich's ball in, and it was Petrovsky who got there first. He wants the corner. And it will be a goal kick. More than a matter of hoping that Newcastle can continue in that vein. It's a must. It's how they won such a clear advantage for themselves in the first half and they must bring that out into the second half good work from Sash Petrovsky again quite possibly his number one fan Kim Teliodorus, suggesting he's the man who will break the deadlock it's not a silly thing to suggest at all he's done it plenty of times before he's a high quality striker he looks to be in the mood he will feel as though he owes his team and his club one after missing that penalty or having that penalty save last match day and he certainly looks in the mood he's got plenty of teammates on the basis and the evidence of that first half Newcastle right up for it now Yan up against the Puzo. that's beautifully done Wang Chang Ching is furious with his teammate that he didn't continue the run they're continuing the argument by uh, Adam Deputo. Free kick Beijing. And the last thing the Jets need to do is concede here. Xiao Ting to deliver. William Madibo up from the back. Was the big Cameroonian who headed towards goal and side netting by Wang Chang Ching. Warning signs for Newcastle. Well, there was a lot of wide eyed Newcastle players watching that one come back across the goal from William. It's the best chance of the match for Beijing. Wang Cheng Ching, a tight angle and stretching, but could easily have done better. Sao Ting with the right footed cross a free kick mostly it's his left that does the damage that was a real good one and that's a high foot acknowledges the error so a nervous moment for Newcastle football has a funny habit Will House to take the Jets set piece. Tottenham Stanley got there first, but again the foot was high. This time it's Beijing who get the free kick.
And there's no doubt that uh, Beijing looked to have a more attacking mindset in this uh, second period, which is just uh, seven minutes old. It's funny, their previous coach, Shen Shung-Fu, actually resigned over criticism of the team's defensive style. Perhaps that's been uh, hard to shake off under their new supremo, Li Jiangsu. And we should really credit the Jets because it really didn't allow Beijing to play first half. Pin them back. Hoffman having to chase his own through ball. That's called the kick and chase, I think. Whatever, it didn't quite come off, but Newcastle again have possession. Good part of the field as well. That's beautifully done by Petrovsky. Wheelhouse's ball looking for Thompson. He was waiting to pull the trigger. Shouting there just in time. That's a perfectly weighted ball by Chu Dong Lang. Gofui holds it up. Xu Yifan out to Wang Cheng Ching. Su Dong Lang again. Elrich's header. Hoffman picks it up and sold. Griffiths a bit short there. Impetus with Beijing again. Well, they're a different proposition in the second half, Beijing. The intensity evidently has dropped from Newcastle. This is not something that they would have planned for. This is just a normal ebb and flow of a football match. And Beijing have risen into the space that Newcastle have vacated for them. And it just adds another fascinating pointer to this encounter. It's locked at nil all. Could easily, should easily have had goals. Dead right, Griffiths probing. Top of Stanley had to get there first. Well, he did initially, and then it's side netting again, this time by Yan. And Top of Stanley, whose initial work was superb, then got himself in a bit of a mess. It's the second decent half chance for Beijing in this second half. Newcastle can be thankful that the angle on both of those chances, Simon, have been very tight. Top of Stanley, even though he's on the ground and out of the game, refused to be taken out of the equation, and it's good desperation, even if he missed his first clearance. Yan was pushed deep to the byline, and Ben Kennedy had the angles covered anyway. Now, Donny de Croto, and the touch was poor by the Dutchman. Not too often we say that. About the Dutch or about Danny de Vrood? About the Dutch, I was smiling. It's caught a bit late, good advantage played. Wang Cheng Ching. Well, he's done well to create the space for the cross. Wheelhouse's header. Feels for a high foot against Adam Griffiths, not heeded. Petrovsky threads it through, that's a better ball by De Groot. Hoffman through, one on one, he's been forced wide. And it's a good block again by the goalkeeper. Howls of frustration from the home fans and from Hoffman. Now that was a corker from Donny de Croat. What a beautiful pass. Hoffman needed to do better. Everything was done for him. End to end stuff again. Wang Chang Ching, Su Dong Lang, first touch not good enough. Milicevic hooks it clear. Hoffman with a chance to make amends. The noise levels. Rise again around Newcastle Stadium. Petrovsky, oh, well, they've raised even more now for the offside flag. Not me, ref, says Big Sasha. Not for the first time. And he's right, just. You really can't take your eye off this match. 
no sooner is one attack completed or successfully defended than another is launched. <laughs> and as you can hear, the fans are right into it as well. It's a parochial, passionate town, Newcastle. They are desperate for their team to stay in the mix in this Champions League. That's a great one, too, between Adam Griffiths and Matt Thompson. He's a good centre, he gets one, too. Up goes Petrovsky, drops for the throat. Who fires it through a sea of legs, it just wouldn't sit properly. Yeah, that was an awkward one because Petrovsky put in a great challenge. It was a beautiful one to Griffiths to Thompson, two of Newcastle's best, and the looping cross invited Petrovsky to seriously muscle up. He got up high, forced the pressure, and it just didn't get out in front of Donny De Groot, and he couldn't really angle in the goal or get the muscle behind it as he needed. But very refreshingly, the last few minutes, we've seen a notable contribution from the import. Well, he has pedigree, 30 goals for FC Emmen, the Dutch Eerste Divisie, back in 2002-2003, which made him the uh, second tier in Holland's top scorer that year. Well, he's more than capable of playing at this level. Wheelhouse sold a bit short there. Oh, and it's broken for Yan. He drives for goal, blocked by top for Stanley. Zhu Yi Fan! This is one wide of the post. That's a great game, isn't it? The Newcastle completely earned the full running of the first half, but Beijing good enough, big enough, strong enough to come back, to rebalance themselves at half time, to re energize themselves. And they've revitalised their Champions League claims. They've been excellent in the second half. Ben Kennedy ran that one beautifully. Uh, this is another fabulous instalment of Champions League football. Well, maybe Lee jang Su has just reminded his players at the interval that they're still in with a shout of qualifying here. Remember, they've got to play Nagoya in their final group game. And the Japanese club are already through. So it won't mean anything to them. They're guaranteed a top spot as well. Wants it played first time, it's too deep for him. Griffiths, Adam, that is ropeable that he didn't get a decent centre from Jason Hoffman. He's involved in everything, isn't he? Good and bad, Jason Hoffman. Thompson, too deep. Well, it's another good chance on begging for the Jets and you say that without them actually forcing a save off the goalkeeper or ultimately getting a chance on goal but there was the way the field was opened up and Hoffman again flying down the right hand side but just too much on the cross the one thing you can say about Jason Hoffman is whatever's gone right or wrong for him tonight he hasn't waved the white flag he hasn't hidden he keeps running up to support his teammates and to affect the outcome of the game Thompson's touch. Hoffman force wide. Elrich in support. Four in the middle. He picks out a green shirt. Get another go, Tarek Elrich. 
That's good backtracking by Ryan Griffiths. He's worked ever so hard tonight. Well, the pace of the game, absolutely relentless. In fact, it's too quick at times. Well, you can tell that Beijing have got a sniff for this now. That speed with which they took that free kick, they did not muck around at all. Perhaps a little too quick even for Ryan Griffiths to adjust his position. He was pinged for offside. It was a tight call. Thankfully for Newcastle, it went their way because their defence was stretched. Thompson is looking for the overlapping run of De Puzzo. It was well read by the Beijing defence. Claims for handball against Topper Stanley. Wheelhouse under pressure. You can tell the change in the pattern of the game, Harps. As Lugo Milicevic is yeah, very much a, a centre-half in the second half. He's dropped anchor, hasn't he? <laughs> Fancy there's a goal in this game somewhere. Elrich showed too much of it to Yang Pu. So uh, Matt Thompson has been pushed up to be right up on the shoulder of Donny de Groot with uh, Petrovsky. Perhaps to drift out wide on occasion. Jets have another set piece. Uh, that, that's the unenviable part of Donny de Groot's job. He was completely sandwiched in by the two Beijing defenders, neither of whom have sprung to their feet. Look at this. This is a tough night at the office for a striker. You know, there is plenty about William Modebo, chunky and muscular. Lang Zheng doesn't mind putting it about either, but it's Donny de Groot who walks away without even a flesh wound. That is the tough part of his job. Short, Milicevic drives it, it'll break for Sasha Petrovsky if he can keep it in play, in fact, he lets it run and it'll be a corner. The Jets' seventh such set piece. Is this the moment for Newcastle? Just over the top of Topo Stanley. It's going to be a pretty high delivery to achieve that. Ulrich sets it up again, but flag is raised against Milicevic. Now, first change of the night is going to be made by uh, Beijing. It's uh, Wang Cheng Ching who will be withdrawn his replacements. I'm going to be careful how I say it. Wang K. Former uh, Shanghai Shenhua man is a substitute. Also told he had a little spell in Brazil training with Sao Paulo where he was teammates with one Kaká. See if any of its magic has uh, robbed off on the replacement. And it's going to be a double change for uh, Beijing. 
Go free is uh, the next man to be withdrawn. And his replacement is uh, Yang Yun. Young striker, just uh, 19 years of age, so like for like replacements, as was Wang Ke for Wang Cheng Ching. Still no movement on the Jets bench. Well, perhaps that's about to change. Thompson. Well, just got the angles all wrong there, the captain. And Hoffman right and Petrovsky left and went through the middle. Zheng Lang, the substitute, Yang Yun puts it into the path of Ryan Griffiths, he's away here, oh it's a wonderful finish, and Ryan Griffiths is on the score sheet, no goal, but that doesn't mean no goal for the surname Griffiths, and that is potentially a hammer blow for the Newcastle Jets. Well, two Champions League match days against his former club, or one of his former clubs, and two goals for Ryan Griffiths, who I can assume has just said a cheerio to his newly born niece, Joel's new daughter, but that's for family celebrations. This is for Beijing celebrations. And we hinted at it, football has a funny habit. Newcastle with the vast weight of the opportunities, but it's a former Nova Castrian in Ryan Griffiths who takes the most of his. 1-0 Beijing. Well, it's deja vu for the Jets. Similar story against Nagoya. Now, what can they do in response? They've got another corner. Those opportunities in the first half. This level, you just have to take them. Simple as that. Here's the first change by uh, Gary Van Egmont. It's going to be Donny de Krotov and Brody Moyon. Get your thoughts on that in a moment, Harps. Meantime, here's the corner. Instant response would be perfect for the Jets. Elrich is ball in, looking for Petrovsky. Yan will try and relieve the pressure for Beijing. Wang Kang, charged down by... Adam Deputzo, Jets have a throw in. Well, it's still there for the Jets, and I made my thoughts earlier. Peter Haynes, for something different, would have been the card I played. I don't see the players train every day, and Egmont does. Brody Moyes, the man with the chance. Newcastle, the team that needs someone to create and take that chance. So far, it has been a Champions League of 2009 where they have made plenty. Certainly enough to progress to the last 16. They find themselves 70 minutes in, their final home game. Still trying to solve the equation of scoring a goal that can get them a reward they'll feel they deserve. Here's Petrovsky. Oh, the puts a bit unlucky. That's for Ryan Griffiths, well... As we said earlier, wants to be playing in this part of the world next season. Two goals now against the Jets. How can Newcastle ignore the latest Griffiths to be linked to this part of the world? Cool finish. Blistering acceleration. Off balance in the, in the first part to hold his on, onside position and then chase the ball down under huge pressure from Tarek Ulrich. It was a fabulous, fabulous piece of work from Ryan Griffiths. It really was. trying to rouse the Jets and it is an all too familiar tale at the moment lots of possession lots of huff and puff no end product 
And then the soccer punch. But we should point out very clearly, Simon Saspetrovsky evoking the ire of the official, shouldn't have. I thought that should have been play on, but shouldn't be lost sight of at this point. This group is so tight that even a loss isn't fatal for Newcastle. Makes next match day even more difficult, but things stay the way they are. Beijing goes to seven. Newcastle are just one win behind them. Goal difference, of course, would come into it. The odds would be heavily against Newcastle. It's not over yet for the Jets. Just trying to do uh, some of the maths that have to overturn a goal difference at the moment, which is in the favour of Beijing to the tune of three. Come short. Come short. So they'd be uh, reliant on Nagoya doing them a favour. Of course, they'd have to uh, beat Ulsan. Li Jiangsu. Well, he must be delighted with the turnaround. Because his team. Uh, punch drunk after the first 45 and yeah, they were. recovered superbly and it's very frequent that we talk about coaches earning their money at half time and the Korean has certainly done that a huge pressure you know, there's all sorts of reports in the Chinese the Beijing press about a split between management and the coach and various interests trying to influence the dressing room this is Yan He's been very busy tonight. That's a good ball to Su Dong Lang. Good block by uh, Topper Stanley. Comes out to Thompson. Now the counter is on for the Jets. Through for Sasha Petrovsky. It's a foot race with the goalkeeper. And Xi Yang wins it. Good play by the Beijing number one. That's rather wasteful. Uh, not his happiest moment, Tarek Elric, but this is a great chance, this. Perhaps Pas Sash Petrovsky two or three years ago might have beaten the goalkeeper to it, which is not to discredit Petrovsky, but Yang Zi, the goalkeeper for Beijing, really has kept them in the game tonight, and that was another excellent contribution from the Gowan custodian. Well, he's uh, third choice for the national team at the moment, is uh, Xi Yang. Behind Zhong Lei and Song Zhen Yu. There's uh, two caps to his credit, and perhaps that's why. Kasper Tafta's uh, arrival is imminent at Harps, you'll be pleased to hear. Meantime, is Hoffman. Can't get there to Thompson. And Adam Griffiths had a lash at it too. Yeah, that was a tough one for Adam Griffiths. It was an awkward height. It skidded off the dewy turf, and it was fractionally behind him. wheelhouse to make way for Patafta. This will be a popular move in the eyes of the Newcastle fans. Well, can his cultured left foot be the key to unlocking the door? Van Egmond not best pleased with the referee's uh, assistant on this near side. Good pass by Adam Griffiths. Hoffman needs a good ball in. Petrovsky was just too high for him. It's been the story of the Jets' night. Credit to the Jets, though, for their perseverance. They're not giving up the ghost by any means. Milicevic. Headed away by Modibo. 
Good Harry by Brody Moy. Might have a lash, or it just, I think, bobbled up at the crucial moment. Yeah, I think it did, but it was the last attack which really caught the eye. Beautiful switch of play from Adam Griffiths. Look at that. Great first touch from Jason Hoffman. Too much on the cross again, and, and, and this will be the epitaph to the performance if Newcastle are to go down. They've lacked touch at the final moment. Hoffman has had plenty of invention, plenty of intention, but has lacked the touch at the crucial moment. Thompson, that's a great ball for Taft. Oh, it was behind him. And he doesn't catch hold of it with his weaker right foot. That was a golden moment for the Jets. Well, we have seen some beautiful passing tonight. A real exhibition by players from both teams. And Matt Thompson has just shown what he can do. Onto his wrong foot, however, Patafta. If fancy if he continued the momentum of the move, kept it onto his left foot, he could have angled the shot. Not to be. Another good opening for Newcastle. You talk about technique. If there was one player you'd put your house on control in that pass, it would have been Kasper Tafta. Maybe the uh, lack of game time. Just telling. Challenged by Ryan Griffiths. Yan. Oh, he's got away from his marker superbly. And credit to Adam Griffiths, who concedes the corner. Well, he did the hard part, but he ran out of solutions himself, Yan. He has been impressive tonight on the few occasions when he's found himself in space, and he really led Lubo Milicevic on a merry dance there, opened the penalty area up, and then just ran out of ideas. And thankfully, for the sake of Newcastle, he did. This, would you believe, is Beijing's first corner. 11 and a half minutes to go. Another goal here, and it's curtains for the Jets, surely. Easy play by Kennedy. Sean Rooney's going to be thrown on by Gary Van Egmont very shortly. going to get your wish to see Peter Haynes, I'm afraid, Harps. What price a Milicevic pass to a Rooney finish to equalise. And it's the skipper coming off. Yeah, excellent game, Matt Thompson, I feel. And particularly where you consider his Champions League campaign started in the doldrums in the Workers' Stadium in Beijing. Accepted a lot of the responsibility for that poor first half. But I have to say, he's been outstanding in the game since. Now, Yan has pickpocketed Nikolai Topol Stanley. That's a clear foul by Adam Griffiths. Well, you can see that tempers and frustrations really started to boil over for the Jets. Adam Griffiths gets a yellow card. That means he has perhaps played his last game in a Jets jersey. So that's his second yellow of the group stage, so he's out of the Ulsan trip. Well, I think it's a clear free kick. He arrived with the ball probably simultaneously, but it was from behind. The referee will have adjudicated, and the yellow card has come for the deceit by action, descent by action, rather. And that was needless. His team needs him, certainly next, next match day. Free kick takes a touch, corner Beijing. If they're to still figure in the Champions League, it's slipping away from the Jets. They're staring down the barrel of no return when they should have received something. One K goes deep. So it'll be a corner. Good work by Yang Yun. Played it onto the shins of Topo Stanley. 
There's uh, the new men. Well, Rooney didn't score last night for Manchester United. Maybe he can score tonight for the Jets. It would be a priceless goal if he could find one. Beijing, perhaps understandably from their point of view, not too eager to get on with things. Good ball by Topper Stanley. Hoffman shakes off Yang Pu, and he won't get the better of Zheng Lang. <laughs> How are you doing, Tarek? Said Ryan Griffiths. Newcastle old boy or not, he's here to win. Well, the way things are shaping up, he's the man who is going to achieve exactly that for his team, Beijing Go on. Well, Joel Griffiths, I'm sure he's uh, very proud of his brother. Scoring that goal, he'll be equally disappointed, I'm sure, for Adam Griffiths. Handball by Petrovsky. Another few precious seconds wasted. Shouting to Wang Ke. Well, that's a good ball in, and again, it was Ryan Griffiths on the stretch. He's been very impressive since coming off the bench, number 17. You have to say, for Beijing to come here without seven of their regulars, pinch a result, if that's the way it ends up, shows the quality and the depth of their squad. Jets still not out of it. Hoffman's ball in, looking for Petrovsky. Corner. Well, good defending again from Lang Zeng. He has been outstanding. For Beijing, Hoffman again wide. They've sprung that trap a number of times, Newcastle. They've done it well, and he looked to get it around the defenders. It was a cross that had some appealing tail on it. It's after delivery. That's another corner for Newcastle. <laughs> this is the Jets' tenth corner. Tafta's ball in, and the keeper was under serious pressure from heavy traffic there. It's desperation stuff for Newcastle. Their Champions League dreams are slipping away. They've got to find a goal and quick. Oh, that's clever play by Yan. Well, their body strength. Beijing's last de ditch defending, Simon, has been exemplary. None better on the field than keeper Yang Ji. And that last example, a ball that had real point to it. Elizabeth with the follow through on Yang Pu there. But you can hear what the Jets fans think about all this. They feel there's plenty of time wasting and play acting. Not strictly true. It's more frustration than anything else for the home faithful. Seen their team dominate large swathes of this game. Perhaps there'll be no reward for them. 
unless Petrovsky can perhaps dig it out here. Needs help. Adam Griffiths arrives. Lays it off for Elrich. Petrovsky! Sato Petrovsky, the villain against Nagoya, the hero against Beijing. What a strike! Oh, no less than the Jets deserve. Tarek Elrich has really offered not a lot going forward in this game, has left it late, but he's found the marksman at the moment on the far post. Adam Griffin sets up the play, he's been doing it all night. Petrovsky lurking in an offside position, and there are doubts over the legality of his positioning, but the assistant referee is way play on. And Petrovsky has side-footed Newcastle back into contention. Well, the old roof was lifted off the old stand this week, and I'll tell you what, the new roof on the east stand very nearly went off after that strike. A quality moment by Sasha Petrovsky. He may well, your right halves have been standing in an offside position. And perhaps the Jets have earned that bit of luck, and they're still alive in the Asian Champions League. What an absorbing night's entertainment, and it's not over yet. It's been fabulous. And there'll be four minutes of added time, we're led to believe. Just wait for the Newcastle Raw to crank up. Oh, the squadron jumping up and down, literally with joy at the moment. They thought that goal would never arrive. Well, they weren't the only ones, Simon. And that includes Gary Van Egmont. He must have wondered where a goal was coming from, but his recruit, Sash Petrovsky, has thrown them a lifeline. And maybe they'll get more out of this game yet. Tatafta hangs one up high. Petrovsky wins it back. Hoffman! Top of Stanley's in there. And the flag has been raised. Offside. Oh, it's heart-stopping. It's heart-stopping action. Here's the ball in from Hoffman. Nobody offside. The assistant referee needs a quick crash course on the offside rule. As tough as it is, but he's got the last two calls wrong. Thankfully for Newcastle. Four minutes of added time. Crowds is going to try and roar the Jets over the line. Ryan Griffiths wanted a high foot there. Referee not having it, nor that alleged foul on Tarek Elrich. This is Yang Yun. Jets still have to be careful. Oh, and then a very late challenge by Ryan Griffiths. That's going to be a card. And it's yellow. <laughs> and He's I think not hugely popular, is he, in this part of the world at the moment? Well, I think that's poor refereeing. Nikolai Topol Stanley has defended that brilliantly. And his release, Tarek Ulrich, who was in acres of space on the right hand side. The referee should have waved play on and administered the yellow card when play broke down. He's blown at the ref. It could have been a brilliant climax to the game. Still can be, of course. Malintovic. And this time it's Hoffman who's offside. Well, Hearts, it's been a long time since we've uh, heard the noise levels as loud as this inside Newcastle Stadium. Adam Griffiths. Tired ball, looking for Hoffman. we played almost two minutes of the initial four. Is there one final twist to this game? Tarek Elrich sets off on a run. 
gets the corner. Righto, well, hang on to your hats. Suck in the big ones. Time's ticking. The corner's taken. Newcastle are away. Oh, it's a poor delivery and a strange decision to punch by the goalkeeper. Elrich returns it. Rooney's header. Oh, what are they doing, Newcastle? Ball's still in play, or is it? It was like ping pong in there for a moment. Oh, it was Brody Moy and Sean Rooney who squared the ball off the far post. Tarek Elrich with the deep cross. Sean Rooney to Brody Moy who just cannot readjust his body. Whoa, that was the moment. The latest in a line of moments for Newcastle that they haven't capitalised. Final 60 seconds. Is there one more chance for the Jets? That's a terrific ball from Sasha Petrovsky. Hoffman. Elrich. Adam Griffiths heads it back into the danger zone. Only partially away for Tafter. Brody Moy going the wrong way. Milicevic trying to wriggle his way through. Rooney! What about that? Sean Rooney has won it for the Jets. And Romania erupts all around Newcastle Stadium. It's an absolute ripper. And what price, Milicevic, to Rooney. Say I told you so, but what a climax to a fabulous game of football. You can't even hear yourself think. Lubo Milicevic, he didn't mean it, but it worked, and that is a finish of the highest quality. What a game of football. What a moment for Sean Rooney. What a moment for the Jets. And that's staring down the barrel of second place in the group. That is an absolute stunner. I'll tell you what, whatever Wayne Rooney can do, Sean Rooney can better, it's all over. Unbelievable. Newcastle have won it. They look dead and buried, but they're still alive in Asia. Nothing short of victory would do, and victory incredibly. And the last possible moment has been achieved. And now it all rests on the trip to Ulsan on May the 20th. Australian pride, salvage for now at least. Incredible, full time. And a scoreline reading, Newcastle Jets 2, Beijing Goan 1. And there's just one word, helps, and that's wow. Well, you couldn't get a better advertisement for football. You couldn't get a better advertisement for the Asian Champions League. Well, Gary Van Egmont, his head's bowed as he walks off the field. I reckon emotionally he's completely wrung out. He run the changes, they worked for him. And the two players who made headlines for a little tater-tater training during the week have linked, however improbably, for the moment of the match. Only football can dish up drama like that. The fans gathered have got more than their money's worth. The adventure continues in Asia for the Jets. An unforgettable night here at Newcastle Stadium. A wonderful exhibition of football, a result the home team deserved. The visiting team, valiant in defeat. Brilliant stuff. Well, here's all the goals from a brilliant night's entertainment in Newcastle. Ryan Griffiths with the opener, great finish, and then the comeback from the Jets. Well, you can only pay credit to the Newcastle Jets. Now, their hopes evaporated at that point. Ryan Griffiths really plunged the dagger. The away team thought they'd done enough. They were a different proposition in the second half. A wonderful transformation. But at that point, it was Sash Petrovsky. They got to break the Jets. He was offside, but it was a great finish. And they knocked and knocked, and they came and they came. And it was Milicevic who bounced off his shins. Who cares? And Rooney, he will never, ever forget that moment. A fabulous goal to decide a match in Continental Club Championships. It simply doesn't get any better. Brilliant, brilliant to have been here and watched it. It sure was. Three quality goals. A great game. The Jets, well, in terms of the possession, you'd probably say they deserved it, but it didn't look that way. 
for a long time. 21 shots on goal throughout the 90 minutes, just seven of those on target. 14 corners, 11 of which were earned by the Jets. 30 odd fouls and four yellow cards for good measure. One of which for Adam Griffiths will keep him out of that now crucial game in Korea on May the 20th, where a point, incredibly, will send the Jets through to the last 16. And Sean Rooney is the name on everybody's lips, including, I'm sure, the Jets coach, Gary Van Egmont. He's talking now with Mel McLaughlin. Gary, a couple of minutes ago, I thought this interview was going to go very differently. Can you just tell us uh, how you're feeling at the moment? Uh, relieved. Um, it keeps us in the mix, obviously. But, uh, oh, look, it was fantastic effort by the boys and a uh, wonderful character show. Do you think it's just reward from not only tonight but a number of games where you guys have had the possession, the momentum, the intensity for most of the game and, and haven't have failed in that final third? Yeah, I do. I, th I think um, you get your rewards if you, if you keep working at it and I think exactly what happened tonight. But uh, first half, we're a little bit critical of uh, probably having too many touches in the wide area when we could have got the ball in earlier centrally and then second half we tried to do that. And uh, no, we kept going to the final whistle and um, we got something out of it, so it's fantastic. And some tactical changes there, no doubt. Sean Rooney, Rooney you'll hear about that for a little while. Yeah, we will, for sure. Um, a fairly inept name, isn't it, with Rooney? But uh, no, we, we changed it a little bit uh, at one stage there. We pushed uh, two central midfielders on. We're playing one defensive midfielder at one stage. And then we, at the end, we went 4-4-2. We just uh, got the ball central and um, tried to get the, as many times into that box as possible and um, paid off. And as you mentioned, you have an enormous game still to come. You're very much still in the mix to advance past this group stage. It must mean a lot to you, but not to, uh, I guess, dampen the mood. It, will you have a lot to think about it, with regards to the fact that it took you so long to, to score those goals at the very end? Oh, look, I think, um, you know, early on, we, we probably, as you said, territorially, we, we should have got something out of the game. And when you're on top, that's when you need to, to strike and that's when you need to get something out of it. But... Uh, uh, Fantastic character shown by the boys and for them to keep at it and uh, get the goal, so we're very happy. I bet you are. Congratulations and good luck in a fortnight's time, Gary. Thanks, Mel. Yeah, the coach has been through every single emotion, I'm sure, tonight, but uh, the overriding one will be joy, thanks to those two guys, Sasha Petrovsky and Sean Rooney, two fabulous strikes. And, well, the Jets fans are in party mood so much that they've taken every single piece of kit off Lubo Milicevic. He uh, made his way back to the dressing rooms and just his underpants. It's been that sort of a night in Newcastle. Sports tight, Simon, thank you. Thank you. Oh, well, I call them underpants. I wasn't a professional athlete like you, uh, Harps. Here's the Group E table. Nagoya are through to the last 16. They've got 11 points, but Newcastle now in second and with a fantastic chance to make it through to the knockout phase. They need just a point in Korea against Ulsan on May the 20th to achieve that objective. Unbelievable. Beijing, well, they are as good as out, and it didn't look that way for a long, long time here in Newcastle tonight. The celebrations are just about to begin for those Jet supporters. They played their part too. It's been an absolutely fabulous night in Newcastle. Hope you've enjoyed it. From me, Simon Hill, from Andy Harper, from Kim Oteliadoras, Mel McLaughlin and all the Fox Sports football team, it's good night from a very happy Newcastle. See ya. This has been a Fox Sports production.